So Peace Family, we're joined here with another legend. This time it's a, definitely a special guest, a huge fan. Myself, a huge supporter of this brother, Crazy of the 504 Boys, aka Crazy Dama, Crazy aka Doc Holiday. Uh, what's good, fam? <laughs> Everything, you got them all. <laughs> you got them all, brother. Yeah, you told the facts, you facts, you, you know the history, you got it, that's it. <laughs> Yep, and you know, when you say Crazy Dama, man, and uh, Doc Holliday, what made you come up with those aliases, man? I know Doc Holliday from Tombstone is one of my favorite movies, but... <laughs> yeah, the, um, the Crazy Dama, back when I was young, I was on some... Um, they had a rapper used to be from Houston called Gangsta Nip. And uh, he used to rap with Scarface and all of them, rap a lot. His name was Gangsta Nip, and all he did was rap about psychotic, psychotic shit. And he used to uh, call himself Ted Bundy. So coming up, listening to all that stuff as a kid, I said, I'm gonna be like Jeffrey Dahmer, I'm gonna be Crazy Dahmer. So I just, you know, they was like, always would say crazy, get the bodies out the refrigerator, stuff like that. You know, I didn't really know the history of Jeffrey Dahmer, I was just a kid. So I took I took one of the, the serial killers who was famous and I just started calling myself Crazy Dahmer. Now with the Doc Holiday thing, I was on, um, when I was recording um, Shed Tears for the World, I got sick. I had got tuberculosis. I got TB and I almost died. And um, Ed West, the late great Ed West, you know, he passed from Corona last year. He came in the hospital to see me and he looked at me and uh, you had to go, when you come in there, you had to, just like we got with Corona now, you had to wear a mask and come in the room when I had TB. They had me on all kind of breathing stuff and they had me in a vacuum room where nobody, you know, so nobody else would get sick when they come to visit me. As soon as he walked in and looked at me, I opened my eyes and I looked at him. He said, what's up, Doc Holliday? That was it. Because <laughs> Doc Holliday, the real Doc Holliday died from tuberculosis. He caught tuberculosis. He had tuberculosis. And I had TB. I had the same, coincidentally, I had TB. So when Ed looked at me in the hospital, he said, what's up, Doc Holliday? And when I came out, I did, um the first song I did was Streets to the Pen. You wonder why my nose is bleeding, nigga. I've been speedballing all day. Used to call me crazy, now they call me Doc Holiday. Hey. That was the first introduction to Doc Holiday. Used to call me crazy, now they call me Doc Holiday. And that's when I, a, a song called Streets to the Pen on Shed Tears. That was the first time Doc Holiday was introduced. I had just got out of the hospital. I lived, I had lost like 65 pounds, 60 to 65 pounds. I was small, I was like a skeleton. I went in the studio. I dropped streets to the pen. And that's when I say used to call me crazy, now they call me Doc Holliday. He was born. And that's the <laughs> for Doc Holiday right there. So, you know, rest in peace definitely to Ed West because you guys did a lot of classics and stuff together. And uh... Whoa, you know it, you know it, you know it. <laughs> you know it, man. Ed was, Ed was a a gift to the world, man. I ain't gonna lie, I be having to sing my own hooks now. On, my new, on the new stuff, they gonna say, damn, crazy doing a lot of singing. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, so, you I can't think like Ed, but I just do what I can do because um, Ed is one of those people that you can't replace. Like you can never replace an Ed West. I'd rather do the hook myself than try to replace Ed because Ed was so special. He was special, man. So um, I guess it's, I guess if I would have left, it's hard for him to say I replace Crazy. As you know, it's, it's very few people could get in the studio. Like I get in the studio, my, my preparation, you know, I write raps in five minutes, five or 10 minutes, I'm done. If it take me longer than that, Something wrong with me, yeah. you know. Pete, tell you, never talked up when you when you you gonna get that big interview with Pete. When you get that interview, ask him. He'll tell you I'm the fastest writer that he ever had. Yeah, no. You know, I, if I sit in the studio all night with enough beats, I could do four albums easy. I, I believe you because even from the catalog of stuff that you've got out from you know your albums, mixtapes, um, the stuff you got out that people ain't even really heard, and the stuff that people have heard, but you got literally, you know, thousands of songs and maybe hundreds. Of really, they, they had records of yours that people were mislabeling as two pot songs back in the day. Yeah, and, you know, they yeah, they had um, people was putting them on, mix, yeah, people was putting them on mixtapes and there was um, you know, bootlegging them and saying it was pop songs and stuff. So, you definitely got a huge um catalog of music. So, I know that when it comes to it, you definitely put that down real quick. Yeah, it'd be um, I remember that when they had the Machiavelli seven or the eight. I told a story they had a dude from Houston and uh, he the one that put out the Biggie and Tupac song, um, Running. They had a song called Running. They had Pac and, Pac and Biggie on it. That was the only song they had together. Yeah. Remember that song, Running? Yeah, yeah, I Running from the police or something, Pac was killing it. And yeah. Biggie killed it too. 
he the dude who put that out, he had called um Ruffero when I was with the record company and he offered me a hundred, a hundred and some thousand dollars to do a do an album like I was Pac. Wow. And I said, hell no. Because it wasn't so much as about the money, because at the time I was just in the street hustling. I wasn't no big hustler, but I was hustling. I was rock hustling. And you know, a hundred bands was good money. But Tupac is really my idol, him and Starface. Like the whole thing with me trying to do that for the money and then people discover that that was me, it would have been a shame thing and I'd have just been embarrassed because Pac is my idol. I'm not Tupac, I'm crazy. But I learned from Scarface, I learned from Pac, I learned from Rakim, I learned from the greats that's before me. So for me to duplicate them and put their name on something and pretend to be them, I can't do it. You know, one of the worst songs I feel like I ever did, even though a lot of fans like it, was the song Look At Me Now which was on, on the 504 Boy album, where I did the picture me rolling over. On the but I didn't want to do that. Yeah, remember that? A, a lot of the fans love it, but I didn't like it. Like, I can't listen to that song because official, they was from Philly. The official group was from Philly and they wanted to recreate the Outlaws and the Pac thing. And they was on me every day. You know, that was my little dogs. You know, they ran with me, them and Slay Sean was, we was always together. You know, when we was in the studio, we go to, we hit the city together, strip club. We did everything together. All them East Coast, all the East Coast was with me all the time. Nice. We could have easily did a, we could have easily, they could have easily been breeder like, cause they was with me all the time. So they like crazy, we gotta do that song. They wanted to do it, they wanted to do it, wanted to do it. And they always was getting on songs with me on breeder life. You know, they on a couple of songs. You don't really wanna walk with me. Cause I got some killers from the South to the East. You see what I'm saying? So. They own it. Desperado got on that one with me. Okay. And you know, the breeders just, they just, they just was riding with me, you know, the East Coast. So I returned the favor when we did that um second 504 boys. I returned that favor and they look at me now. But when I listened to Look At Me Now, that was kind of for me, that was a that was just de detrimental to my to my to what I was doing because I would always say it was cool for people to compare me to Pac. I you know, like I say, it's a gift and it's a curse because at the end of the day, it put more pressure on you to be compared to somebody like Pac. You know, cause Pac is Pac. I of still course. listen to Pac all the time, you know, yep. to get me through. To be compared to Pac is a, it's an honor, but it's so much pressure because you can't have fun with the music no more because it's like everybody listening. It's like, it's like they, they this dude cut the next Pac. So I can't play with the music no more. They're like, oh man, you could have been more lyrical on there. You know, you could have been more, it kind of took the crazy dime of the, the fun days away from it because everything had to be, I couldn't just have fun no more with the music. I gotta be thinking on every song. I gotta be extra thinking. Like I gotta be overthinking because it's when, when they compare you to somebody, it's more like you come, you carrying the torch for them. So I feel like every song I make, I want, you gotta be making like a Pac watching me, no. like a Pac watching me, you know, it, it was crazy. Like with the Pac thing, you know, like a lot of people to the day I say, I even called P, I heard P say, when we did the No Limit, um, when they had the No Limit thing came on BT and we was all on it. And P got on there and he was saying, um, I think he said Slim or somebody was saying it was like the the New Orleans Tupac. And I, I called P, I said, P. Now we know Slim was a legend, had his own style, was just all of that. BG, all of them followed him. He was a king, he was a goat. But I say, there's only one dude from New Orleans, man, that they, that they kept compared to Tupac, the whole world. And he started laughing on the phone. He said, I know crazy, bro. I said, we just gotta be honest. I say, before I got to No Limit, I was with Rough L Records. I did a song, First Got My Chopper. I was number one in the city with Juvenile, Juvenile uh, Jubilee. Back that ass up, both of them songs was number one. Oh, either Partners in Crime, Why You Act, and Fun, and it was number one, okay. but then First Got My Chopper, First Got My Chopper became number one. Okay. A gangster song. Yeah. None of them dudes did that. No, no gangster song became number one in New Orleans, but but that first got my chop. So when P first came for me, P offered an armor truck, a million dollars in an armor truck cash to the CEO of Ruffell. And the CEO had money at that time. He had this is real life. He yeah. had money at that time. He had money at that time. So he turned it down. He wanted 50%. He wanted to keep 50% of me. And P don't rock like that. When P come for somebody, it's all or nothing. I'm gonna give you what I'm gonna give you, man, and then you can go about your business. That's how P roll. He a businessman. 
He don't come to split the company. He want to buy the company. So that's how it was. So we didn't do the deal. So I had to give him another album, which was Please Don't Kill Me. And that was it. And then I moved on. I was I was like, it's time to go. And then I went to No Limit. And when I went to No Limit, MTV came to the country club where people was staying with the gold ceilings. And they put the camera on me and just told me to freestyle because they thought P was hiding Tupac on No Limit. Yeah. <laughs> they thought Pac was still alive and he was on No Limit. So I had to rap for these people for about 30 or 45 minutes so they could hear my voice. And they say, oh my God. They was just blown away. They say the spirit of Pac is in this, in this, in this guy. Most definitely. It's him. Yep. But one, they looked at me, I'm six foot four, you know. They they looking to see like an uh, actual Tupac, Pac yeah, short, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, see, they see this big tall, this big tall nigga stand up. They say, "God damn!" <laughs> the birthday they say, "Man, this dude is huge." It took it to it. So, yeah. So I told P, I say P, I say so. Um, did you send a million dollars in armor truck for somebody or, or MTV come and see if Tupac had the thing? I said, the only New Orleans when I first came out in New Orleans. When Chopper hit the radio, they had, they got DJ Roll while we're in there, tell you the same story. We'll do a documentary and they'll tell you, the DJs. They had five to 10,000 callers. They say, play that new Tupac again. That's why, you know, and then I was like, you know, the breeder from New Orleans still thugging like Pac. Yeah. yeah, so at the end of the day, that's why I be saying when people be saying, if you say, if, even if you say Mac, one of the greatest lyricists I ever heard, or ever was on a song with. Mac remind me of Nas. Yeah, yeah. A goat. He remind me of a goat. Yep. Nah. And the only reason Mac wouldn't probably be a goat because he don't have as much material because the um penitentiary Situation. studied his growth Facts. for 20 years. Yep. Other than that, other than Mac, Mac would have a a a, a, a thousand songs. Yeah. So, but he remind you of Mac. Slim had his own style. He just had his own style, created his own lane. BG took that style and ran with it. He in his own lane. But when you come to New Orleans, or anywhere you go, they said New Orleans Tupac. Then when I went to No Limit, you look online, the No Limit Tupac. I mean, even when I was in school, like in the UK, um, and I remember when that 504 Boys album dropped, man, and uh, the album was so crazy. And I gotta salute you off top because, like, this was at a time where a lot of people were saying, you know, the time could fall enough and all that, and No Limit was kind of, you know, subsiding. And you came yeah. in and you literally put the put the whole thing on your back because that that brought so much interest. Even out here in the UK, Europe, Germany, other places all around the world, everybody was like, yo, have you heard that guy crazy at the, at the No Limit album? And, and the thing was, wow. we did, not a lot of people knew what you looked like. I actually, you know, dead ass had people coming up to me in school saying, that's Tupac, that's Tupac. I'm telling them, that ain't, <laughs> I would say, that ain't Tupac. Listen, you know, he don't, but you know, <laughs> that ain't Pac. That know. was P though. <laughs> See, P did, that was P. That was like, that's what P did. P did a cover. I took a Breeder Life cover. If you look online, they had a Breeder Life cover where you see me like I got the press sign, like I got a No Limit jumpsuit on. I know you done seen it, Fonzie, yeah, you see yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a No Limit jumpsuit on and I got my hand like I'm praying. Like, yeah, yeah. That was the, that was the original Breeder Life cover. But P, by everybody thinking I'm Tupac, P did that with no picture to capitalize off of that. I didn't know. You know me, I was just so happy to get to No Limit. Whatever P decided, I went with it. Yeah, yeah. You know me, I'm a team player. That's how I lasted so long. You know, look, you know, you the dawn, you the colonel. This your ship. Yes. I'm your number one soldier. When you make a decision, we gonna live with it. That's how I roll. If I'm gonna follow you, I'm gonna follow you. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride to the end. That's how you know it is in the hood. When I get in the call, like I tell people, whenever I got in the call with my partners, sometimes I have cold in my eyes. I don't know what's going on. They say, man, we about to ride. I just get in the call. I ask questions later. That's just how I roll when I'm loyal and I consider you, you know, I'm a part of that. You know, it was an honor for me to be a No Limit soldier. To be honest, all my career, was it was an honor to be a hardhead with Roderick Smith, yep. rest in peace. It was an honor to be Rough Error with Henry Glover and Ed and all of them and Legend Man and the rest of the crew. It was an honor to be there because those people believed in me. Those people put their money behind me. And they, they put all these they stuff on my shoulder and I never let none of them down. 
everybody with rough era rough era never never had no um no album sell over 20,000 40,000 50,000 copies until I came there they had them put out they had them put out my um a guy that was like my brother he was with murder Inc. with me he was with hardhead with me legend man they put him out he did real well they put face forever out before legend man on um, they had put sported t out a while or a sported t album so at the end of the day when I came there it was just a different ball game it was a different ball game when I put my songs out and I had featured on all of their albums so those guys kind of helped me because they I featured on their albums so the fans that they had you know um became Crossover. my fans too yeah so it was always like the streets had started asking for me because Henry his fate was in um face forever like that was his group like that was his like he had love for them dudes like I think they was from the night one that's where he was from so the CEO Ruff Era, that was his favorites but once they put their album out and everything, they had started asking for more money and stuff, you know, because they was ready to leave the label. So they started wanting to negotiate for more money. So he got mad and he was like, man, we just gonna go with this crazy thing. And we did it. When I when I did the Chopper song, I liked it, the Chopper song. And um, nobody ain't really believe in the Chopper song, but me and Ed, like Henry didn't like the Chopper, the CEO from Rough Ever, he didn't like the Chopper song. Crazy. We put it on the mix show. We put that thing on the radio. It was over. It blew up. It was over. The whole yeah. city. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to just I, have. I, I play that now. Still, like you know, jamming the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. know what I'm saying? Go, go when ahead. I first got my shot, boy, I couldn't use it. Now they want a thug at me, so I abuse it. Hey, yo, dude, crazy. That's what Roger told me. If you ever cross my family, your life is what you owe me. I'm the proud of you. I can go forever, man. <laughs> you know, it's it's music. It was music and. And, and Henry became a believer. He like, oh man, that chop of the day, man. That chop of the day, man. That chop of the, chop of the one, that chop of the one. He became a believer, like I made him a, a believer. He already believed in my talent, but he didn't really know, like, I don't think he knew what he had. Like, and then everybody started coming and then he realized it because like I say, his favorite group was Face Forever and Legend Man, all them people was like people that knew him. He didn't really know me. I'm from the Iverville Project, you know, dudes from the they from the East. He didn't know me like that to believe in me, but he know they could rap. He been knowing them his whole life. But when I came in, it was like something different. Now, he wasn't affiliated with the Iverville or nothing. Now he, he affiliated with the Iverville. So all of that stuff take time, you know? You have to learn each other, yeah. you know? And um, see, Murder will come out every time. See, Murder was coming out. Like, and that was big for me, cause you know, No Limit was, was big. I had already had my group over there, you know, like um, the Gambino fam. That was my group. I started the Gambino fam. Well, I was gonna ask you about this because um, you know, we, we yeah, I'm getting ahead of you, man. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna hold <laughs> slow back and let you go. Nah, go I, ahead, I, go I, ahead. I'm gonna let you do you. Go ahead. I, 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 you gotta I, cut me off, man. You know, I, you know, I'm a dude. I'm, I'm a, I'm a talker, man. Cut me off. Yeah, because um, some, some of the fans have definitely heard um, Breather, Breather Life being represented. And even just, you mentioned Breathers, like the Gambino family, we've heard them on a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff talk about being Breathers and stuff. Um, even mm -hmm. Sean, like Click Breathers and that. So can you break yep. that down for us, the whole Breather, Breather Life movement and stuff like that? Um, The Breather Life, the Breather Life is a, is a big old movement. Like most of the time you see the Breather Life, Breather Life is a whole nother record company. Like Breeder Life is the um the record company originated from the um Nightwalk. Breeder Life is me. But these were these were people who was around me that that just believed in me. Like they believe in me so much, like all of them call me King Breeder. Like King, you know, King Breeder and just they just they just real loyal. They brothers now. They ain't just breeders, they my brothers, you know. They they like people that, you know, I go to Walwood and and but when we started the breeder thing, let me take you back. It was me, rest in peace, Mr. Sleep. And it was um Tucci Man, who y'all know as Lil Gotti. I named I named Lil Gotti from the Gambino family Lil Gotti. I gave him that name. His real name was like Lil Wayne be calling himself. Lil Wayne took his name, his street name, Tucci. His real name was Tucci Man. That's Reginelli's big brother. Lil Gotti is Reginelli's big brother. Reginella was kind of a baby when me and when he got together. I got the breeder tattoo. Sleep got the breeder tattoo. We all had the same tattoo artist. This tattoo that's on my arm right here. Okay. All of us had the same tattoo. Legati got it. Sleep got it. Sam got it on his stomach. 
my bro. Is that Lil Sam um, from um? That no, not him. No, 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 no. Oh, your no way. Oh, your brother Sam. Okay. Yeah, nah, nah, yeah, nah, oh, him. Nah, you, nah. Your big brother Sam. But anyway, <laughs> say, say I'm talking about big. I'm talking yeah, about big Sam. Big, the, the we, dog, could do, the dog. we could do this with the hell. Big, big dog. Sam. You know that, that Stokeland took Sam down. Now, but Sam, I'm talking about the Sam who was literally like, like a mini Suge Knight. <laughs> <laughs> say, no, say, say no more. Say no more. Everybody loves Sam. We talking about him. <laughs> but um, I know him. No, we went to school together when we were small. That's Sam cool. But anyway, you know how I go when when um, I know you're gonna get to a lot of stuff. But you know how how stuff go. Um, some of the people knew me my whole life, and when things go to getting hot in the streets, uh, you know this person, you know people just trying to get on and just start having problems with people they knew their whole life. And I just I don't respect that because that's like fine. And me and you don't talk for twenty years. I know we was real. You always was real with me. So that gonna still hold weight. Just cause you ain't heard from me in 20 years don't mean you got no faker. Oh, I got no faker. That just mean we ain't catch up with each other. I'ma judge you off. I'ma judge you off the time that we did have before we had the, um, you know, the um, vacation from each other. Yeah. I'ma judge that, I'ma still remember that. We are gonna pick up where we left off 20 years ago. Man, let's go get us a drink, fine. Let's get you still rapping. Let's get in the studio, you know what I'm saying? That's just me. Just like yesterday. <laughs> just like I seen you yesterday, that's how it would be. Facts. Yeah, I'm like that. I come to UK. As soon as I get off the plane, up, even on my way there, I'm going to say I got a brother out here. I got a breed out here, a soldier out here. Yeah. I'm going to know I already got a family out there. You know, I got fines there. I got feet breeder. You know, I got, I know who I got out there in certain places in any country. I know who I got in every country. You know, I got breeders in every country, and I know they mean y'all mean a lot to me. So I know, I know who it is. Over the years, I'm I'm not a fake person. Like at the end of the day, if I if I if I fuck with you, I mess with you. It's for life with me, unless you do me something, unless you snake me in some kind of way to ruin the relationship. The relationship don't never change. Just because a person don't talk to me, don't mean the relationship change. We just ain't talking. You either busy or I'm busy, but we gon' we ain't had no fallout. So long we had no fallout, we good. That's the type of person I am. Like, that's what I used to tell people. I tell people with P. With P, I'm going to ride or die because me and P, don't get, we don't get in no arguments like he might have with everybody else. It's not like that because guess what? I recognize him as the colonel of the team because he, he the boss. No limit is Master P, bro. When I wear this tank right here, I ain't wearing this tank for no music. I wear this tank to represent my big brother. All the tanks I got, I wear them to represent P. Because P enlisted me in that army, and that was a big time in my life. So that's why I wear I don't wear this for no music. I wear this to represent the love I got for P, the loyalty I have for P. When I when I think of No Limit, I think of Master P. They had a lot of good rappers on No Limit or some killers on No Limit, if you want to say mystical or somebody like that. Killers that I think carried the label. But the one who started the label, it's P. Yep. Plain and simple, he the colonel. Everything came through him. Every decision came through him. Period. That's his That's his company. That's his dream. Whether he want to call it No Limit for Elf. Wait, No Limit, the new No Limit, Gutter Music, No Limit South, Soldier Army, anything that's connected to that. When you think of No Limit, who the first name you think of? Be honest. Pete, when you say No Limit, you think of Pete. Nobody else, has, you know, yeah. But that's one of the realest things that you just said. Even, you know, I don't think I've, I've heard anybody else speaking that sort of regard. And, you know, it shows you just the level of respect that you got, even for yourself as well at the same time, because you ain't ashamed to say that. Some people, you know, they get around somebody and, and they thinking of, you know, themselves too much sometimes. Like, and, and I always say it's like, you got WWE and you got Vince McMahon. You wouldn't have... A WWE without Vince McMahon, you know what I'm saying? You can't go, you know, that'd be like John Cena hating on um, Vince McMahon or WWE or something, but that's the platform that kind of gave him even the break at the same time. So it's like, sometimes even with, I think with us and with our people, sometimes there's a lot of um, negativity the way that people look at things and um, it can lead to a lot of confusion and stuff, but. Yeah, you you got to think a lot of people, this is what I always say and people got mad. A lot of people that, that, even if a person, the reason I always speak highly of people, like a lot of people get upset with people, but this is how I look at life. 
I look at life from my, I ran with people who I thought, Roderick Smith, hands down, the realest person I ever ran around. The realest CEO of I had name was Roderick Smith, period. Because I was on a, at that time I was coming directly from the project, I was in the project, I was, I was violent. And I would hang around this guy and this guy would break bread with the whole city. Like, he was so popular in New Orleans, he could go anywhere and draw a crowd. And he was a hustler. He had hard head records. He just was like an icon in that city and he was so real. Like, I just never met nobody that real. Like, he didn't care about money. He didn't care about nothing. Like, it wasn't, one time him and Legend Man had got in a fight because I don't know, he just was mad at Legend Man. And I jumped in and helped Legend Man. I grabbed him and choked him. <laughs> now this was, the, this was the boss. He could have got my ass knocked off. He's worth over a million dollars. But get what he did. The next day he picked me up, we drunk Hennessy and had a ball and we forgot about it. Now he still was mad at Legend, but he totally forgot that I helped Legend because he just respected me for being loyal to Legend. He respected my loyalty because Legend was somebody that I was real cool with. And I had got real close with him. I used to go around Legend family, around his mama, around his children. So Roger, he wasn't even mad at me. We, matter of fact, me and him hung even more then. And I helped Legend somebody who I consider was a friend because Roger was the boss and we was at the bottom. That's kind of how me and Slay Sean and all them officials, all of us got tight. P was Master P when all of us got there. He already was on Forbes. He already was made. Man. All of us was, even though crazy, the only difference I had from everybody the difference I had from everybody was I was in the, I was an independent artist. I had been with two different record labels by the time I got to No Limit and I had sold records independent. I had sold over 70,000 records independent. I wasn't just nobody like, because um, I'm somebody family or something like that. P just put me on and put an album out. My first time coming out is on No Limit worldwide. Come on, man. Like I always say, P could have could have fired it on the record or coughed on the record and sold gold. You know, back then, P was so hot. Anything he put out that had the No Limit stamp on it was gonna win. Just like when No Limit cooled off, it wasn't like that. He was. It was hard to, to move those records like that. It go both ways, you either hot or you cold. Most of them dudes that came out was hot as I don't know what. They was hot as I don't know, No Limit was hot as I don't know what. They just rolled P's wave. It's just a fact. And, and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you take a dude, he took them dudes, bro. P took dudes, whoever came in and signed with No Limit. I was with Rough Era then, I was locally. I was getting it out the mud. I was selling CDs on the street. I was hustling, I was still in that, in that life. Them dudes was with No Limit, I used to see them. They riding in Camaros, they riding in Tahoes, they riding in um, whatever you could ride in, they riding in it. Mercedes. They got two-story houses, they got houses. Every time they go in the studio and drop a verse, they getting five grand. Ask me how I knew this. I wasn't with No Limit, but guess what? Lil Gotti was with No Limit. Guess what? When the Gambino family came out with their album, I was in Baton Rouge helping Lil Gotti with the hooks to that album, Mystical P. Nobody even knew I was there because guess what? They didn't even know I created the Gambino family because Gotti, was, that's his cousin. So he just went, he went over there. P didn't even know one time he was in an uh, Explorer and they come to the Arborville. He come to Arborville with Gotti to get me they sitting outside. P didn't even know who he was coming get. <laughs> but I had them. I had them took a handout from the dude from Rough Era. Had put some money in my pocket. You know how that go. I couldn't break the deal. So by the time Lil Gotti come with P to pick me up and get me, I would have been a Gambino family member because we was Gambino family. We was doing songs together in the house, practicing. Gotti wasn't no rapper. Gotti was a street goon. I made him a rapper because Sleep, him and Mr. Sleep was friends. They was like brothers already and Sleep brought him to me. That was his dog. So he started coming to the Arborville, which was, you know, you know all my history. He started coming from the Magnolia, you know the whole route. He started coming from the Magnolia to the Arborville. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm out, I'm outside hustling, selling rocks. Got it, walk up on me. He got a big old pistol on him. What's up, Breeder? He just, he just, we just hit it off. He just became like, that's like my little brother. Yeah. He, him and Sleep was so tight. He, we just so I say, man, we the Gambino fam. I named Sleep Farazano because his name was Farrell. and I just gave him Lil Gotti. I just named him. It wasn't even Lil Gotti. It was just Gotti. I just gave him Gotti at that time, and I just had a regular. I ain't had no mom name. I had King Breeder, the same name I use now. King Breeder. I ain't give myself a mom name. 
I just was King Breeder because they always calling me King. What's up, King? What's up, King? What's up, King? So it was like that. And then they went to, um, when they went to No Limit, they was doing their thing. But like I said, when they came, I let them beat on the door. I was in the house. I ain't even open the door. This is a true story. Got it probably. A hit isn't going to say, you son of a gun. But I was in the house. I had them took the money from this dude. That's it. I think he gave me 2500 three grand. I probably could have got 100000 from Pete. But at that time, they was creating their lane, and I was creating my lane. Yeah, that's good. So uh, about what? Is this when you would have been with um, Hardhead around that period? No, Roger K got killed. Roger, Roger got killed. When Roger got killed, I had did, I had did a feature with um, the group Face Forever. They was on Rough Era, and I did a, I did two songs, two features with them before Roger got killed. So when Roger got killed, um, Henry was another dude that had a lot of money and everything, and he had a record company. And I had did them two features, so I was familiar with being around them. And then Legend, who Legend, who was my Murder Inc. partner with Murder Incorporated, he had went to he went to Rough Era. So you know, I told you I helped Legend fight one time. So Legend was like my brother, and Ed West was the vice president of Rough Hell. So Ed was on Hard Heads too. Okay. You know, if you listen to an old song on MCL album called "Surviving the Game," that's Ed singing the hook back then. <laughs> crazy. So that that's yeah. crazy how everything just even how all the connections go back and stuff like that, and even uh, yourself, you spoke a bit about that. Iberville and stuff, but you also I've heard you rapping some music and say that your family are from the mouth and the Calio as well. So um you got like a, a lot of roots all around from uptown to downtown, everywhere all around New Orleans. That's where I come from. I come from uptown. My dad is from the Calio, my mom is from the Mel for me. Them two them two um was married at a young age. I don't have not one blood relative downtown. I don't have what what I represent, I represent on on hood and just love. All my cousins, all my family is from those projects. The Melphamine, the Calio, and uh the the Melphamine, the, the Mel the Mac and Calio, St. Thomas, all that. All my family is from uptown. All my blood right now. If you go if you ever on my Facebook, all my little cousins, all them people from the Magnolia, all the ones who be on there, I love you cousin. All of them from the Magnolia, all of them from the Calio. That's where my and that's my real direct blood. All of them is my blood. That's my mama blood, my daddy blood. All them people from uptown. What happened was when my mama was in the hospital having me, she met a lady who was having her little boy too. And the lady lived in Iberville and her and my mama became friends. So my mama got on the project list. That's how they do it, you get on the list. And she had a choice to either go to the Magnolia or go to the Iberville. And by her and that lady, which um she gone now. I, I call her my auntie. Her name was Rhonda. Rest in peace. But by them two getting so tight, my and was hanging out. My mama said we gonna move to the Albertville over there by Rhonda. And then we all called ourselves cousins and family. So we called ourselves family. Everybody in Albertville thought we was real cut to the day. They probably like damn they ain't cousins. Yeah. Now that I'm talking, but they thought we was cousins because that was the only people we knew in Albertville. And I had one more dude I knew in Iberville. His name was Tuna. He was from the Melphamine too. We went to elementary together on up. So I knew him. That was it. In the Iberville, I was a stranger. But what happened was I they adopted me. That project adopted me. Everybody, everybody just was, you know, they had people that was bad, but I just fell in in that Iberville. I felt at home. And then I had a cousin. My cousin Connie, who was from the Magnolia, she was older. That was my mama first cousin. You know, that was my mama first cousin. They all fall down to my to be my cousin, but that's my mama's cousins. You know, they older. She moved in the project and she was using drugs and selling drugs. So I used to sleep by her house and she was right there in the contact. So that's what that gave me that gave me some family in Iberville. That gave me some real family, like real blood in the Iberville when Connie moved back up. <laughs> So, um, yeah, my story crazy, man. My story. That's why when people come at me, like when people diss me, they can't label me like that because they they run around my family. Half of the time, they don't even know. Like a lot of people don't know my daddy got about 14 children. All my brothers and stuff grew up with all those dudes. They be around people they've been around their whole life and, and just finding out that's my little brothers. 
But that's my older brothers. I'm just telling you. They probably wondering when they were saying some stuff about me, people was looking at them funny. You see what I'm saying? Well, I, to be like honest, people, I really had nobody have much, um, anything, you know, negative to say about you in the rap game or anything like that. Um, you know, as far as the artist goes, you know, the, you probably be one of the realists that actually, you know, connects with the fans, connects with people and, and spits a lot of realness and integrity. And even when you talk about like the Tupac, um, reference to me personally, it's, it was never like, you know, oh, this cat trying to, like, I done heard almost all the so-called Tupac, you know, sound alike from the realist to this yeah. cat to that cat. And, but, you know, when I listen to you, I hear realness from your own stories. It's just like you talking now about that, growing up in the Iberville, growing up around, yeah. you know, you mentioned Roderick and people in your music, you mentioned uh, your own experiences and stuff like that, but make it relatable to people all around the world at the same time, especially, you know, our people as well. You know, I think back to, um, and the Breathe a Life album, you know, the song you had in there, The Truth, you know, whew, phenomenal, you know what I mean? Um, black, eye, black, black Eyes, you know, tracks like yeah. that. You know, I'm just a that. kid, I can't help but the cry. That's A.O.S. right there. <laughs> right, yeah, there you go. And you know, so um, you definitely, one of, you know, to me, you're one of the realest cats out there in the game, and I'm not just saying it, you know, just because you were talking or just because um, I grew up listening to your music and stuff like that. I'm saying it because it's a yeah. fact because, you know, not everybody moves like that. And even just the loyalty that you've displayed, it says a lot for your character and stuff like that. With that being said, you know, we have seen small amounts, obviously, of, you know, I want to say negativity, but differences, I guess, in opinion with people when it comes to, I guess, the music business and some of the stuff that happened with No Limit and stuff. Uh, you know, recently we've seen like the passing of some greats, DMX, Black Rabbit and stuff. We've seen P speak on like hip hop perhaps needing a union. You being somebody that was round a lot of this yourself, do you feel like, you know, people have been like, I guess irresponsible, just needed probably like more teaching along the ways so that they couldn't have made the same mistakes that they did? Yeah, like, like I looked at life, um, like I look at life so, so different. Like I look at life, um, I think people make bad choices and blame other people. It, you know, the, the the thing with me, I don't rebuild. I got a book right now, man. I, I hate to give it away, some of the stuff, but I don't rebuild myself so many times with so many things, different companies, different ground up levels. Um, working, I done did all kind of stuff that I don't really show on the, on the Instagram or IG. I done did stuff in my personal life, just just rebuilt myself, you know, do other things besides music. And a lot of people, I could have easily went back. I could have easily went back to that life. But you gotta understand with me, I was shot up on two different occasions. I was shot in, in my back four times. I was shot in my face, you know, one time, you know, came out under here, right here and came out under here in my back I survived so many you know so many life ending could have been life ending situations that you ain't gonna push me back to that level unless unless I really really have to go to you know for my children or somewhere I ain't got no choice then I'm gonna do what I gotta do but at the end of the day it's too many opportunities out here in the world a lot of those guys have habits and different things and they fall and they wanna blame somebody or either or either they they're in a situation where they don't want to be in people saying, oh, man, you should be this or you should be that. No. At the end of the day, listen, I'm not saying nobody. I don't know people's business or whatever it is. I'm telling you from when people do stuff for you, if you come into a situation and you have a cult, you have houses, you have money, you ain't never put nothing out. A person could put that music out and you sell wood, nothing. You're going to give them that money in that house and that car. You're going to give all that back. So at the end of the day, how I look at life, it's like you find it right now. If you pick a little rapper, you're a millionaire. You say, I'm going to give you 20 grand, a car, house. You put the rapper out, he'll sell two copies. That's a loss. That's a loss for you. You see what I'm saying? Yep. But it's a loss for you. But for him, it's a word, a life-changing thing. It's a blessing. And that's how I feel. I feel he bless a lot of people, bro. Amen. They know it's a blessing because a lot of them don't have those things that he blessed them with right now. 
and they know they know it, but they won't say it. They'll just say they'll just say the other stuff instead of getting on there and just tell the truth and say, man, I really appreciate even if even if you feel it with bad business in the end, at least get on there and say, man, tell a real story. Say, man, this man put me on. We was riding in cars. We had our own house at such and such age. Tell a story. Man, nobody even know who I was. This man made me. This man put me in all the album covers. This man really made me. This man really, instead of getting on there and saying, what somebody owe you? You can't even give a person Give me a hit song. Give me the song that was number one on the countdown or that was on the radio in people's ears. Which one was it? You can't even do nothing like that. Okay, before No Limit, what was your hit song? What song in the streets everybody was fucking with? Let me tell you that. Give me that. Like when you talk about crazy, you like you say, you know my whole history, all my nicknames. You know the Murder Inc. albums. You know the the, the Rough Era albums. You see what I'm saying? I even, even came back after No Limit and did the Us Killing Us album with me and Sam, with Breed Entertainment. Um, Mr. Sleep put that on my um, Land of the Breeders. I'm just saying, I, I've been busy. I got over 300 features, three, 400 features I done did in my life, in my career. If you want to talk about me, I done proved it. I got 400 songs right now unreleased. Because the reason I don't release the songs, because I keep thinking every song is a better song. <laughs> so then next thing before I know it, I done recorded another 100. So at the end of the day, when you sitting on here, if a person tell their story and then I tell my story, it make their story look funny, but that's not how it's supposed to be because at the end of the day, we to each his own. I came in this world alone, I'm gonna leave this world alone. I'm on my own. So that's how it go. Whatever your story is your story. People feel some kind of way because they know they want me to co-sign. That's the same way. Oh, I know you're going to get to all of that, but that was the same way. I'm going to jump just a little bit, and then I know you'll come back to it. But that's the same way with Slim. When Slim and P had they falling out, he decided me and him going to do our own thing. Huh? Huh? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hold up, bro. I got kids. I got a wife. What we talking about here? And the man been good to me. The man put me on. Took me from local to worldwide. I ain't had to worry about nothing. I ain't, I ain't been ducking no gunshots in Iberville in a couple of years by the time he came home. I'm good. I'm living life, I, I'm I'm going up from here. I'm nowhere but up from here. So yeah, then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just say, okay, I'm gonna just bite the hand that fed me for what? Because because you, you probably got a little overexcited and said some stuff you shouldn't have said to the man. Now, oh, all right. I'm gonna leave and crazy gonna go too. How? How we gonna do that? How we, the reason me and you so close, why? Cause guess what? The boss wanted us close. Guess why he wanted us close? Because every time I got a hotel room, guess who I was doubling up with? Every time I got on the airplane, guess who somebody put the seat, put seat next to mine? <laughs> we weren't paying for the hotel. We weren't paying for the plane. So who was putting us together like that? He wanted us like that. He wanted me and him. He wanted Crazy and Slim to be what they was. Bone some buddies. He kept us together. If I go in the studio, he all he automatically. If I go by CeeLo's, he over there. They said our studio time at the same time. That's why we was on each other's singles. That man made that happen. He pushed those buttons. He put Crazy and Slim together and made us what we was. So maybe Slim didn't realize it, but me, I got some big old eyes. I see everything. Even when I don't tell you I see it, I see it. I read the whole room. Like I always tell people, Fonzie, before somebody make a move against me, I've been a scene it six months ago. Because it's only certain, it's only it's only a certain amount of moves I allow you to make. So it's only the moves I set up is the only ones you can make. You can't get close to me to kill me because I don't trust you like that. So the only thing you can do is get on a song and Kill me on the song. Fonzie, you only got one move, Fonzie. You know how I go, Fonzie, like in your life, Fonzie. You can set your life up with yep. even family or whoever. They only got one move.
They probably got their telephone or something like that. They only got one move because they don't know nobody you know. And sometimes even the people you know don't know what they think they know. I tell people, if you ever watch the show Power, I'm the real live ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Why, 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 hey, Fonzie, by the time I show you the video, I've been gold three months. That's three <laughs> months old. Yep. You going right around there to look and see if I'm out there? You they probably it. painted the wall by the time you see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, you Man, just so crazy on Instagram. You got something different. Yeah. I, yep. <laughs> say, say, man, crazy don't even have that beard no more, man. You got a beard on there. <laughs> Switched off, switched off. Damn. Fonzie, Fonzie, I'll tell you. Fonzie, I learned. You got to think who I, I was around. Yep. The, when I say with Roderick, like people like Roderick, Roderick made the worst move ever. He made one mistake in his life and it got him killed. He had a dude, uh, he was at Club Whispers and he was leaving Club Whispers. The same dude that killed him he had just got out of jail. Roderick was at the mall. The dude walked up at the mall. Roderick bought him a pair of shoes, put like 2,000 in his pocket. He thinking that's one of his partners that he ain't seen. It was his dog. He thinking I ain't seen this man in 10 years. Roderick take him shopping. Roderick was, I told you he had money. He was a big dog. He saw one of his friends, take him shopping, blah, blah, blah. He see the dude again at the club that night. He don't even notice. He keeps seeing this dude everywhere he is. The dude hired to kill him. But the dude couldn't make a move because everywhere he saw Roderick, the shooters was there. So even if he would have got Roderick, they would have got him. So he had to just keep coming back and coming back till he got the right time. So Roderick buy him a couple of drinks in the club. He drank, he drinking and shit. They leave the club. When Roderick leaving the club, the dude stand on the neutral ground and wave his hand. Now it's Roderick and there's about five other cars. His, 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 his people, you know, his entourage, all of them. The dude waved his hand, so Roderick turned his, Roderick, Roderick had a white band, so Roderick make the make the you to come back. He think the dude need a ride. Soon as Roderick rolled the window down and talked to him, that was it. He died in surgery, but the dude shot, through, shot him like five, six times in the chest. The same dude who he had took to the mall, he ain't know the whole time. He not even thinking why I keep seeing this dude. Nope. This, this was his partner, a dude that he knew since he was younger. And he the one that looked night. out for him, took him shopping and everything. You would have think, even if I was the killer, I would have said, nah, man, I can't do it. He this nigga know. keeping it too real with me. You feel me? Yep. Even if I was hired for that job, I would have backed out of it. Just on the strength. How G he keeping it, you feel me? But that just show you, everybody ain't got the same kind of love you got. That's how I live life, Fonzie. Yeah, yeah. You might love somebody. That's like me, Fonzie. Some of the people that saying stuff against me and talking down on me, they got a breeder tattoo on their own. But you wasn't the one, you got the breeder tattoo following your family. You ain't get the breeder tattoo following me, your family did. So the love ain't pure like that, you know? But for me, once you got that breeder tattoo, I love you. I got love for you. Like I got a couple of these dudes I can show you. If I was that type of dude, when we see each other, I'll show you. I ain't gonna put it up on Instagram or nothing. Whenever me and you hook up for a drink sooner or later, you come to town or I shoot up out there, yeah. I show you. For years, I've been telling people, oh man, good job. That's a good song. Man, keep up. You know how I am, Fonzie. Yeah, I used to do it with you when you put course, up a good song. Yeah, you, you ain't, you ain't. I mean, like I said, you one of the realest people I see do that. You know, definitely. I was doing it for them in the inbox. Man, keep going, man. You hot. All of that. But then, when you go after the big dog, you don't want me to say anything. Even if, even if, even if I don't mention you, you feel like I'm talking to you. Why you feel like I'm talking to you? I'm just telling my story. For real. They, they, they got a lot of people dissing people. So why you always, why a person who who supposed to be the same thing I am, feel like I'm talking to them? When I went out of my way to do an interview and say, this ain't for them. 
You can look at one of my old interviews. I specifically said in the interview, I said that. this was <laughs> not for that person. You know, Fonzie, you keep up with everything. Yep, I, I specifically that. went out of my way in the interview because I, I can hear myself while I'm talking. And I said, I don't want my dog to mis mis misconstrue this. So I specifically, out of my mouth, said, this ain't for him. And he still shot at me. Because <laughs> you wanted to shoot anyway. You only had one move. You've been wanting to shoot for three years. Crazy. So um, is there gonna be is there gonna be any, is there gonna be any shooting back? <laughs> I don't know. Is, of course, is, Fonzie. Is, Come is, on I now. Think Fonzie. I think it's what the fans be asking though. <laughs> Fonzie, it wasn't it wasn't because the only reason I ain't shoot back right away at anybody. Anybody say something about me, they uh, Fonzie, I do a song right away. As soon as I hear anything, I light them up. I know you. But what happened was, you know, I lost my wife, so she was sick. I just wasn't telling nobody. So I was dealing with her. Like, I was dealing with her. So I, you know, and she would always tell me, you know, you know, like a lot of times she, when she hears stuff, she just say, come on, that's the devil, you know, and it be true. She right, that's the devil. But at the end of the day, they ain't know what the devil look like. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, don't get misconstrued. The thing with me is, this, I couldn't do a lot of things in my life. Shoot, at one time, my rap partner, who um Alamo, was a better hustler than me. She was better hustler than all of the dudes, all of the dudes in the hood. But guess what? One thing I always been able to do, the same thing I could do right now, Fines. I could rap. <laughs> I'm a hell of a rapper. Yep. And, and and when I'm focused, when I'm really focused, I always say I never made the, I spent a lot of time trying to chase the shed tears for the world album because it came together so good. I spent a lot of time trying to chase it. Like um, we use every song we made for shed tears. Every song we made made the album. So that's what made it a classic. Like with Breed of Life, I gave P 50 songs. So I didn't know what 50 songs he was gonna pick. That's crazy. <laughs> they have songs that's way better than the ones that was on there. Three times better. But he just chose what he chose. And if I give you 50 songs, any one of the 50 you pick is cool. All of them is crazy. So whatever you pick is what you pick. I think the only thing we really picked was the intro. Live this breed of life. Me and Los went there and did that. Cause you know, you had to do a good intro. Yeah. You know, whatever, make a little fun intro. Los, Los played it like an opera or something. And I went in there and did that. And um, of course the Slim song, and um, the C Murder song, of course. Dope. Then we're gonna be on there regardless, cause you don't get too many opportunities like that, you know. D.I.G. If you look at, yeah, if you look at um, Slay Sean, all those type of people, the ones who was really around me, they songs had to make it. The ones with Desperado official, cause all those people was really around me. Erica Fox, um, the um, the song with Trace, she died too. That was uh, her name was Tracy. We had a song called Sex and Checks. It's on the internet somewhere. But that was supposed to be on Breed of Life. Niggas want money, I want checks. N want, no, uh, no. I want sex. Okay. That's an unreleased song. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's on the internet. But that was a that was a Breed of Life song. We'd have, if we'd have did a video for that, we would have did it. Like I say, P, the thing with P is, P is just one man that stretches himself so thin that sometimes, you know, um, if you stretch yourself, that's like finds it with you. You got a bunch of different things going on. Yeah. And I, I, I not, it's sorry to say that, but I learned, I, I learned a lot of that study P that I, I see somewhere, I'm like, shit, what am I doing? I'm doing too much. <laughs> or I'm trying to help yeah. people. I, I fell into the mistake of even trying to help a lot of people the same kind of way because um, I see I see P do it and I really respected it because I see, I found that he did it from his heart as a black man. I always felt like, yeah. look, at that, look at that black man, look what he's doing and, um, you know, putting things together for his family and the community and stuff and all. Um, I thought that's yeah. how to, you know, get everybody involved. And I did it with my own family. I had kin turn on me, all of that stuff, um, over jealousy, yeah. all craziness. Yeah, it's, 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 it's insane, man. Because people, the thing is, like, let me tell you something. You could, finally, you can go and get a million dollars worth of fake money. And everybody see you, see you get it. And you count it on social media. And you and the people sitting there watching you count a million dollars of fake money. Yeah. 
and everybody start calling you Fonzo the million dollar rapper. <laughs> the one who watch you buy the fake money <laughs> gonna say you ain't looking out for him. <laughs> <laughs> now you got you you caught that Fonzo because you really telling you, you you got jokes about that. He got to be the stupidest person in the world. That's what I'm telling you. Yep. What I'm trying to tell you, Fonzo, this is what people. What I'm saying is, bro, a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff is is real. A, a lot of fifty percent real, fifty percent um show. You know, it's just like a movie. You know, you got to make it. Everything about coming out of the struggle. Everything about um just um just showing your come up, showing where you came from, showing what you. But at the end of the day, that's like that's like sometimes finds to be honest, like me. I done been a father, a husband. I done been the guy, guy, goo guy. That's why I was saying when Slim came at me. When Slim came at me, finds I was a different dude. Like I was having so much fun just hanging with Slim because it felt like I was back in the streets again. Cause I got out of the streets once wifey had that baby. My daddy wasn't around like that. So I said, man, I just was so hooked. I was already hooked on her red ass. Yeah. Then I was hooked on the children too. I was really living my dream life. Like I had the perfect woman. I had a family. I was a father. I wasn't just, you know, I was away from the hood. I was away from the struggle. I was living my life. I was living like they be saying, I was living my best life for real. I got money. I got a nice, nice vehicles. I got some real people around me. I was enjoying my life. So when me and Slim fell out and Slim started hitting me up, it was kind of like if you ever watched the old Rocky movies when, when Mickey tell Rocky, you ain't got the eye of the tiger no more. <laughs> you know, if you ever watched the people know, you know what I'm talking about. If you ever watched yeah. the Rocket movie, when he fought Mr. T, fought Clubber Lane. Clubber. And Mickey, Mickey say, that guy eat you up because he got something you ain't had in a long time. He he got the eye of the tiger. And that's how Slim was. Slim was deep in the streets. I had them, I had them got, which everybody won't. I had them got comfortable in the family life. I was living my best life. I wasn't really in the street. So I had to, I did a song called Breeders Coming. When he dissed me, I did a song called Breeders Coming. When I tell you, finally, Lord have mercy, it was the best performance I ever did to date. There's there's very few people that heard it, but the ones that heard it, all these years later, they still could rap it. Wow. And it never came out. But the people that was in the studio, it was so magical to them. You know, they got a dude named P-Town, P-Town Mo. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know you heard of him, P-Town Mo. If you ever talk to him on the interview, just say, P. Tom Mo, how was that song Crazy Hat Breeders coming? <laughs> he just happened to be, he happened to be coming in the studio doing a session after me. So he was in there while he was, you know, my session ran a little over and the song was playing while he was waiting to do his session. And um, man, when I tell you, I lit fire from Slim. I was more, I was hurt that he died, but I was, I was like, God damn, that would have been like my ether. Like, like Nas had with Jay-Z, fuck, that would have been my ether. That would have been my moment in history. Because at the end of the day, this ain't nothing but a, a challenge. Yeah. It's a rap game to see who, a lyric for lyric. It ain't nothing but some New York shit. It's just people be killing each other because everybody in poverty and you seeing a person every day. If you seeing a person every day, it's, it's like somebody saying something about you and you see them every day, you gonna punch them in the face. Yeah. When the hood, if you seeing a person every day, you know, that's that's what I say. Sometimes your time have to be value, valuable. You have to limit your space. You know, you can't just let nobody say. To me, when people see you every day, they choose when you get to die. Mm. That's how I look at life. Right. When when a person, if a person see me every day and know where I'm at at all times, I'm on his time. Because whenever he wake up and say, I'm going to put a bullet in crazy head, I'm going to die that day. Oh, either he going to die if I'm going to know he coming and bust his ass. But, <laughs> right. but at the end of the day, what I'm saying is when a person know your every move, you living on their time. No. Everybody that done got killed in the hood that I know, one of their partners in some kind of way killed them. Everybody I love that got killed, most of the time, 90, 90%, 85 to 90% of the time, it was one of our own partners that turned on that partner. It, wasn't, it don't rarely be a stranger unless y'all get into some beef and somebody come back there to shoot the hood up and kill you. But most of the time, if you hustling with somebody and all of a sudden everybody wake up and you dead, 
It's your partner. He the only one know your every move. That's why I always lim limit my movements. You know, when I've been doing it now for years, I learned that from Roderick. Like I said, the only mistake I ever seen him make cost him his life. He did. He was doing too much for that dude, you know? But that was God's plan too, you know? He was doing too much. You had already seen him all them times. Now he waving his hand and you drive the, you turn out of the, I just would've kept going. I already took him shopping. I already bought the ball. I'm going home, man. You feel me? <laughs> nah. He probably would have called him another time, but he wouldn't have called me. He wouldn't have called me that night. He might have called me again, but he wouldn't have called me that night. Or somebody might have got him. You know, God might have got him out of there before he got a chance to try again. But that's what I'm saying. The first mistake he made, he died. And he made it all the way to surgery. He told the doctor. The doctor said, he told the doctor, he woke up in surgery, told the doctor, Doc, if you save me, I got to a bag with $50,000. I'm going to give it to you as soon as I realize that I made it. The doctor, said, the doctor said, man, you don't worry about that. You don't worry about that. You just hold on. Don't worry about that. The doctor told him, shit, this is a surgeon. He already got money. The doctor said, I'm good. He said, but I'm telling you, doc, you saved me. I'm gonna get the doctor was smiling. The doctor said, man, that dude, that dude was... Yeah, he say, Doc. Yeah, Doc save you save me, Doc. Say you save me, Doc. I'ma have a bag with fifty thousand dollars and give them to you the minute I realize I made it. He said, That's my word, Doc. He said, Hey, hey Roderick, you don't worry about that. Let us do our job. We're trying to save you. I'm telling you, the doctor said he ain't never had nobody say that to him. <laughs> That, 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 that sound like a movie, like something out of a movie right there, man. But it show you, um, you sound like a movie. <laughs> rest in peace, well, Roger. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, you, you mentioned that breathers, the breathers are coming, and I know, um, you know, God bless the dead. It's not something that you're gonna release. Um, I remember though, you know, while we're on the topic, you had a couple of records which, to me as a fan, sort of stood out at the time because I was thinking, oh, crazy kind of snapping. And one of them was um, Jealousy with Tebow. And I mean, you killed that record. And then, um, you know, you got a, a dope verse on that. And then you got another one called On the Block. And I think it was on the Us Killing Us album. And you, you said, I know you got so much record. You said, bam, bam. Yeah, I got it. I know what you're talking about. You yeah, that on the block. That, that, he he said, did that. That was. Yeah, Ezell did that beat. That was a cold. Yeah, that was cold, man. And the jealous, jealous, jealous was cold too. I remember me and Tebow in the studio drunk as a motherfucker, boy. We were drunk. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm gonna tell you something about Tebow, bro. Tebow, a white boy, but when I be around Tebow, I feel like I'm around another black dude. I ain't gonna lie. Tebow used to have me in the goddamn woods with all them white boys. Them dudes, I feel safe. I feel so. I feel so safe with them dudes. Like, like. I don't know, man. I can't. I feel the peace with Tebow. Like Tebow was a real one. Like, Damn. you know, like Tebow. Like, you, you ever be around somebody like you? Like he was a fan, and he was just a cool dude. Like he was like like Tebow would always be happy. even to the day. Probably if I see him, he just always was happy to be around me. Like, and then we develop a relationship where I would like that too. Like I could go to the studio. Like Tebow was one of the very few people I was recording with him and Slay Sean when I was deep in that family stuff. When I was deep in the family stuff, Tebow called me and I come over there to the shed with him and SCC and we'll do some hot ass. Man, Tebow did some hot, you know, we still got to do that Bill of the Kid, Doc Holliday. Album. We got to get that to the world. We have to recreate that magic because we did that magic in a long time, but uh, I'm sure we can. You put that music on, we will go, we will recreate. I recreated. I got one I sent them. Matter of fact, I sent Tebow one about a month ago. A T boy will call you drunk about three in the morning, telling you how much he love you. Love you, man. Love you, bro. <laughs> See, I love you too, bro. I love you too. I love you too, Billy the Kid. But yeah, so you know, it's like a, it's, it's just real. T boy, one of the real ones, man. Like when everybody was after my head, you know, a lot of people was. I don't know, man. I just, I think at the end of the day, I was a downtown rapper. I was representing Auburnville. They had so many of the famous rappers in New Orleans from uptown. And I did this song called Downtown. Before Chopper hit the radio, I had this song called Downtown. You know, that's on the Shed Tears album. Okay. Well, I said, what you mean you don't sell your dope to niggas from downtown? It was kind of like I was talking to Birdman, because he was like, we only sell dope to niggas from uptown. Uh -huh. So when I got a chance to get my album, I did a little thing talking to them. 
But I'm going to tell you a secret about that, too. I don't want to jump the gun because you probably got that coming, too. But Birdman and Slim, them dudes was like family to me, too. Those people don't know. When I was young, I went rap for them. I went rap for them. We had a rap on my project. The first big rapper came out of the Auberville was PMW. Pass that weed to the, I got that red hot sass with the big old bud, and I keep a little stamp that under the rug. He was cold. He had a cold song. Uh, he was with Cash Money. And I used to always tear his ass to pieces. He'll tell you if he tell the truth. I used to freestyle everything. I never wrote nothing. And he brought me the Cash Money one day. But what happened, UNLV was hot at the time with that kind of gangster bounce. So I went up there. I thought that's what he wanted to hear. I started freestyling some gangster bounce. I ain't rap better than gangster shit that I rap all day. <laughs> I started doing some gangster bounce. I'm, I'm a Auburnville nigga. <laughs> so they say, man, you got the voice. We just need to see what style we're going to use. They say, come back another time. They always did like me, like since, since I was younger. But when they heard me again with, with Rafaela, I never forget we was um the dude Chuck who owned Big Boy Records. All of them was trying to get get with Rafaela, and then Baby and them at the same time. At the same time, I was negotiating to go to No Limit. The CEO of Rafaela was negotiating me to go to Cash Money. My story deep. Crazy. And Baby and Slim will tell you because Slim's still cool right now. You know that's my dog. Let me, let me tell you something. I ain't had no problem with them dudes when I did that. Is war. I did that because I chose No Limit, and at the time they was having problems. So I just wanted to show P that I was I, I, I was playing for this. I, I was I was gonna I, ask you about that. If that was something that um like the Colonel gave the order for or something. No, or was just, no, he never gave the order. I just wanted to show him where my loyalty was. That was it. But I never had no problem with um Slim or uh, they they legends from our city. Them dudes is kings. You know, cash money, no limit. Them dudes made it. Them dudes came from the same projects all us come from. And them dudes made it. They heroes, yep. you know, in the city. You know, that wasn't nothing personal for me, to be honest with you, to tell you the truth. Before I went to No Limit, when cash money got their deal, I went to all the parties. They used to invite me and let me in free. We used to laugh. I used to drink for free. I had a good time. I was hot in the city. But they was they had the money. They had everything. Them dudes never treated me bad. Only one I think I never really had a relationship with was Manny Fresh. And he was from downtown, but I just never had a relationship with man. Before it's Slim and, and uh, Baby, I used to talk to Baby on the phone and everything. But I just wanted to go to No Limit because of C Murder and, and P. I just thought they kind of, I thought C, C and P kind of just was a, a, a mirror of me. Like I, I with the gold teeth and just thugging, I just thought that was just like, I, think if you I don't see, know, just wilding out how P used to jump around and C used to jump around. That was me. I, Baby and them had their thing going too with the cars and the jewelry. But I just wasn't, I wasn't on that. And then, like in the city, you know, it was like, you know, um, people was getting high and all that type of shit. I just, I just wasn't, you know, I was around. I was really in the streets, so I know who was doing what. So I just wasn't, you know, some of the rappers and shit. I just wasn't with it. You know, kind of was, and and, and it might have been my, my daddy from the Calio, so that might have been something too. Like my daddy from the Calio, P daddy from the Calio, Boz from the Calio. You know, I used to be in the Calio as a kid, but my grandma, my daddy, mama, I think I, you know, half of my blood is Calio. And so all of that probably was, that probably played a big thing too, you know? Half of me is Calio. My my daddy is, is from the Calio, born and raised in the Calio. So grew up with P daddy. So at the end of the day, that's that's where my heart probably was. Yeah. But when I look at it, it could have went either way. You know, either way, if I'd have went, it would have probably been better for Rough Era if I'd have went to Cash Money because they would have had a district. Baby would have gave him a distribution deal. See what I'm saying? They, they would have got more out the deal. But right before that, me and the CEO, Rafael, we had a fist fight. So once me and him had that fist fight, we had a fist fight for some bullshit. So once we had a fight, you know how that go. I'm going to do my own thing. Now I'm ready to go. So I sped up everything. Game over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Peace, family. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And check us out about the online.com. Also, check us out on Facebook for exclusive lists and new content. And don't forget, as I said, like, share, subscribe. Peace.